All right, folks, happy Friday. So uh, in this video, I'm going to uh, discuss uh, the issue, the history and the culture of uh, Chinese and uh, Korean people and uh, their consumption of uh, dog meat. I'm not sure uh, if you guys uh, saw this on the news back in January. So the South Korean government, they have passed a, a new bill to completely ban the uh, consumption of dog meat. And uh, to all the people out there who are protesting uh, these Asian nations and uh, their cultures and customs and uh, why they're eating dog meat, I have a question for you. So you think it's okay to give a 12-year-old in Canada or the United States puberty blockers? By the way, that is actually happening, okay? Justin Trudeau and Christia Freeland in Canada, they're pushing this agenda. So is Joe Biden and Kamala Harris. Do you know uh, what the puberty blockers they're giving kids are? This is the drug they're giving to these 10, 11, 12-year-olds in Canada. Okay, it's called Lupron. Do you know what Lupron is used for? This drug is used to chemically castrate registered sex offenders in Canada, rapists, pedophiles, also to treat people with prostate cancer. And we're giving all these uh, to 12-year-old boys and 12-year-old girls in Canada. If you don't think that's crime against humanity, then you are a absolute monster. And uh, you want to complain about uh, these Asian countries uh, eating dog meat. Uh, why do I want to bring up this topic? Okay, you have to understand the history and the culture of China and South Korea. So. Why all of a sudden did they start uh, eating dogs, okay? In order to uh, understand this, uh, we have to understand a bit about the history of Japan. We have to rewind the clock all the way back 171 years to July 8th of 1853, okay? We have to talk about this man, Captain Matthew Perry. No relation to the actor. This man, uh, American Captain Matthew Perry, on July 8th, 1853, he arrived on the shores of uh, Tokyo. During this time period, Japan has been an extremely peaceful nation. They've isolated themselves from the rest of the world, and uh, they just minded uh, their own business for over 200 years. And uh, then uh, Captain Matthew Perry just shows up and says, you know what, you're going to uh, open up with the rest of the world, and uh, you're going to uh, trade with uh, America. And this decision 100% backfired. Within a few decades time, Japan turned into a total uh, fascist totalitarian regime. Remember. During World War II, Japan was an ally with Nazi Germany and fascist Italy. They were part of the uh, Tripartite Pact and the, one of the major Axis powers. They single-handedly almost annexed the entirety of Asia. Even long before World War II, back in 1894, Japan realized that uh, because uh, their, the resources on the island were extremely limited, and if they want to rapidly industrialize and grow their army, they will have to look elsewhere. In 1894, Japan attacked Qing Dynasty China. This would go on to become the first Sino-Japanese War. During this time period, the entire Korean Peninsula, which at the time was a puppet state of the Qing Dynasty government, along with the island of Taiwan, these two uh, territories were both annexed by Japan. And uh, for the next uh, 51 years, the entire Korean Peninsula would fall to its uh, dark ages. The entire Korean history, their language, their culture, their customs, their literacy, were all nearly 100% wiped out by the Japanese. Millions of Korean men were enslaved by the Japanese. Slavery was practiced worldwide in every single parts of the world. In fact, slavery is still being practiced in Africa today, where the rich Africans are enslaving the poor Africans. And it is also during this time period, upwards of 200,000 Korean women, they became sex slaves to the Imperial Japanese soldiers. And uh, the official uh, title given to these women, they were called the uh, Comfort uh, Women. But in reality, they were all being chained up, locked up behind dark rooms, and they were being brutally raped by the Japanese soldiers every single day. This practice went on for 50 years. 50 years. And I remember during the uh, Second uh, Sino-Japanese War from 1937 to 1945, China lost uh, upwards of 20 million people. They had the second highest uh, casualty number only behind the Soviet Union. And uh, North and South Korea also had the, their own uh, civil war, where uh, upwards of uh, 3 million people died. And it is because of these uh, long, brutal conflicts, China and Korea spent almost the entirety of the 20th century as one of the poorest nations on Earth. So what do you think that people are going to do when over 90% of the nation lives in extreme poverty? People will turn to anything to survive. Remember, cannibalism was widespread during the war. It was practiced uh, during the American Civil War. And uh, the soldiers from uh, both uh, the Union and the Confederate, 
They were also reported to, to eat cats, dogs, and rats. Every soldier turned to a cannibalism. They were eating their own dead comrades during the siege of Stalingrad and during the brutal siege of Leningrad, the breadbasket of Bolshevism in the Soviet Union. You remember uh, what happened uh, to the uh, rugby team from Uruguay when their uh, plane crashed in the Andes? All the uh, team members that uh, survived the plane crash, they were all eating uh, the fleshes of their dead teammates. Those were their brothers, those were their best friends, and uh, they were still willing to eat their dead bodies in order to survive. You might think that, uh, you know, like you would never do it, even if you were on the verge of death. But I can guarantee you this, almost everybody, almost every person on earth, when they're put into that situation, they would do anything they can to survive. And uh, it is very likely that uh, it is because of uh, so many people from China and Korea lived in uh, extreme poverty for many, many decades. And the many people started the practice of eating uh, exotic animals, insects, cats, dogs, snakes, rats. And uh, in many parts of Asia, this tradition has continued to the present day. Maybe you don't understand it, and that's okay, but uh, I feel like people shouldn't be interfering with other people's businesses, especially when on the other side of the world. The success and the failure of a nation has nothing to do with your race, has nothing to do with your religion, has nothing to do with your ethnicity. The success and failure of a society is 100% dependent on their culture. Look at how much Japan has changed since uh, World War II. They went uh, from one of the most violent nations on earth to one of the most uh, peaceful, one of the cleanest, one of the most uh, respectful cultures on earth. I can guarantee you this, I personally know many people that live in Japan. If you don't believe me, you can book a flight, uh, visit many Japanese cities. You can go to Tokyo, Kyoto, Okinawa, right? Just go out and uh, just tour the streets, go sightseeing. You can be out there walking for 12, 14, 16 hours. When you get back to the hotel at the end of the day, there will not be a single piece of dust on your shoes, on your jackets, or on your pants. Everything is sparkling clean. You will not find a single piece of trash on the road. And uh, I mentioned this topic two weeks ago about uh, how racist uh, many Asian countries, how racist they are towards uh, black people. Listen, especially to all the black folks that's currently living in America, you have to acknowledge that uh, there's a huge problem in the black community. The black culture is uh, completely poisoned. They want to tell you that uh, hip hop, that is black culture, that is uh, black history, okay? Hip hop that refers to black people using the N word, that calls women the S word and the W word, that uses uh, the T word and A word to describe the parts of a woman's bodies. How is this black culture? How is this uh, something you should be proud of, okay? If you don't want other people to use the N word, perhaps uh, you should stop using it. If you're poor, you're poor, and it is extremely difficult to escape poverty. But uh, it doesn't mean that uh, you should be out there stealing and looting and throwing trash onto the street. Many people in Japan and South Korea and in Taiwan are extremely poor. But uh, they will never ever litter anywhere on the street. They will never walk into a pharmacy or a grocery store and just walk out without paying. But uh, these nations used to do that until they changed their culture. If you want to uh, turn your society around, if you want to fix black America, it starts with the simple things. Stop using the N-word, pull up your pants, pick up the trash. You gotta shake the stigma off of your uh, black culture. Because uh, nowadays uh, with globalization, the entire world is connected via the internet. People in Japan, in Korea, in China, they can all log on to uh, social media and they watch uh, what's going on in America. A major contributing factor to uh, the reason why many uh, Asian uh, countries that are so racist uh, to black people is they tell me, oh look on the news. Oh, another gang shooting, another mass shooting. Five armed black men does a drive-by shooting in the middle of the day, kills uh, 10 innocent bystanders. And look at all of these people going to Walmart, going to Apple store, start looting. Because that's what BLM is. It's called Burn, Loot, and Murder. It does not stand for Black America. So if you want to change your reputation, if you want to change the negative Asian perception towards black people, you have to start with turning around the black culture. And uh, this can 100% be done. I want you to remember that success has nothing to do with your race, has nothing to do with your skin color. It's 100% about your culture.